Hey y'all, my name is Dr. Mitch Tan. You or a loved one may have been told they would benefit from an ICD. If so, you probably have lots of questions like, what is an ICD and why do some people need them? And how are they implanted? To understand how an ICD works to save lives, let's first talk about how the heart normally works. Your heart is the engine of your body and responsible for pumping blood to your brain, lungs, and all of your other vital organs. For the heart to be able to pump enough blood to keep you alive, the heart needs enough time to fill with blood and enough time to pump blood out. In some people with certain heart conditions, such as heart failure or history of heart attack, abnormal heart rhythms can occur, leading the bottom pumping chambers of the heart, known as the ventricles, to beat at a dangerously fast speed. During these episodes, known as VT or VF, heart rates can reach or exceed 200 to 300 beats per minute. When the heart beats this fast, the heart doesn't have enough time to fill with blood and doesn't have enough time to pump blood forward. The result is low levels of blood flow to the rest of the body. This can lead to symptoms of weakness, difficulty breathing, and loss of consciousness. If the episode of dangerous heart rhythm continues, poor blood flow can lead to severe organ damage and ultimately death. So what are ICDs? Well, ICDs, or implantable cardiac defibrillators, are a type of device implanted in the body for people who are at risk of life-threatening heart rhythms. They have similar features to a pacemaker, including the ability to increase heart rates if they sense the heart is beating too slow. But what makes an ICD unique is their ability to perform defibrillation, or restarting the heart in the event of a life-threatening heart rhythm. An ICD monitors the heart rhythm continuously, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. If an ICD detects a dangerous heart rhythm, it can attempt to terminate it, either by pacing the heart in a way to extinguish the fast heart rhythm, or, if all else fails, by providing a high-energy shock to the heart to reset its electrical activity. When thinking about how an ICD may benefit you, think about this example. Pretend you're a high-wire acrobat or a trapeze artist. Of course you never want to fall, but if you do, you'd most certainly want a safety net present to catch you. An ICD works like a safety net. While we hope you never have to use it, if the situation does arise where your life is threatened by a dangerous heart rhythm, you and your cardiologist will be very glad you have one. If you are a person with heart failure and a weak heart muscle, or if you've experienced a life-threatening heart rhythm before, you may benefit from an ICD. Your cardiologist or cardiac electrophysiologist will help you determine if this makes sense for you. So how are ICDs implanted? Well, the typical ICD implantation is a minimally invasive procedure that takes somewhere in the range of 45 to 90 minutes, depending on the type of ICD implanted. Most ICDs are placed under conscious sedation, which means that medication is given to help the patient avoid discomfort and pain and to be comfortable enough to doze while still breathing safely without the need for a breathing machine. Additionally, anesthetic or numbing medication is also used in the area of the ICD implant to reduce discomfort. ICDs are typically implanted just underneath the skin with wires connecting the ICD to the heart. This type of procedure is less invasive than other types of heart surgeries which require the rib cage to be opened. Because of this, recovery after an ICD implant is much faster and most patients go home either the same day or the day after their procedure. Recovery after an ICD implant focuses on two main goals. First, avoiding infection at the implantation site. This means taking care of the site and avoiding any activities that result in exposure to bacteria. Things to avoid typically include prolonged submersion in water, such as swimming in pools, soaking in hot tubs, or taking baths until your incision fully heals. Showers are usually okay, but need to be done carefully so as not to disrupt the implant site. The second main goal in recovery is to ensure the ICD wires have the chance to heal. Over time, these wires become very stable, but in the first few weeks after implant, the wires can potentially dislodge if they're pulled on too hard. Your cardiologist will counsel you on the types of activities that are safe and what activities to avoid until the wires become stable. Overall, ICD procedures are very safe and well tolerated. If you're at risk, an ICD can act as your safety net protecting you from the complications of life-threatening heart rhythms.